Hello class, today we're doing lesson 12.5, Interpret Line Graphs. On page 901, we see this. The table shows the prize money for winners of the Masters Tournament. Question one says, fill in the dollar difference between each consecutive year on the lines above. So difference means subtraction and consecutive just means in a row. So I want you to pause now and fill in the differences. So once you've filled in the differences, let's do it together. So between 2005 and 2006, the difference is $55,000. Between 2006 and 2007, it's $80,000. 2007 to 2008, $0 difference. 2008 to 2009, $45,000 difference. And 2009 to 2010 is a $0 difference. So that's what we see. If the data were plotted, would the points, year, comma, amount, form a straight line? So what this means is x, comma, y, the way that they put it in. Year, comma, amount, x, comma, y. Whenever we see that, our x values and our y values need to be in a ratio. Are these in a ratio? If you guess no, then you're correct. Because here, we went up 55,000. Then now to get to the next point, we went up... 25,000, then we went down 80,000, then we went up 45,000, then we went down uh, 45,000. So there is no good way to graph this. It would not be a straight line. So a straight line means all points going up by x to go up by the same y. That doesn't mean the same y as our x value. It just means the same y in general. So if something went up 1 and the y went up 2, our next point would be 2, comma 4. Again, we're following a ratio of equivalent fractions. Then it asks us this. If the master's tournament is held once a year, in a line graph is made of these data, will there be any realistic data values between the tournament, uh, tournament dates? So I've got one here, one here. My data is increasing. But is there anything here? No. There is no realistic data because no one wins. There's no winners in between years. So between tournament dates, of course, nobody can win. So a line graph is used to show how a set of data changes over a period of time. To make a line graph, you have to decide, uh, decide on the scale and the interval. Exact same as if you were making a normal graph, be it a bar graph, be it a, you know, an XY graph. Then we graph the pairs of data. We graph the X comma Y and then simply draw a line to connect each point. So this is an example of movie ticket sales, and this is an example of Olympic men's 100-meter butterfly. So we have these points. For example, in this point, our X is 1, and our Y is 1,200. Then the next one is 2, and it's about 1,450. 3 is at 1,150. So we see and we plot those and then connect them together like a connect the dots. So here are the steps. We make a line graph of the data of Earth's population. So then describe the population change. First, we have our chart right here. And then we just plug in. Our year is the independent variable because it does not change based on our results. But the population depends on the year. So it is our dependent. Our independent is X. Our dependent is Y. So when we graph this, we find out that we get these points. And look at that. It goes whoof, way up. It's actually called an exponential graph. The data includes numbers from 70, or 790 million to 6,080 6, million. So you know what? Let's make a graph. I would have made a graph between that zero and I would have just gone up to 7,000. And they also went up in increments of 1,000, which is great. Totally works. Then... Let the horizontal axis, our X, represent the year. Let the vertical axis represent the Y because they are dependent and independent. And always make sure you label these axes. Then we plot and connect the points. 
And then you label the graph with the title. And we say, describe the change. It increased drastically. It went up drastically. There we go. That's how you interpret a line graph. The line graph below shows the cost of tuition at a college during several years. Describe the trend, then predict how much tuition will cost in 2020. As we can see, the cost is increasing in a pretty much straight line. So by 2020, it's going to be increasing to approximately $11,500 or $12,000. That is a joke. College costs way more than that. Way, way more. That is a enter sad face here. So first things first is you're going to make a line graph and you're going to describe the change in the line graph. So this is going to be on page 902. So I want you to pause it and I want you to take the time to make your line graph and resume when done. So if we were doing this, we made our chart where the highest they made it was 18,000. In all situations, they could have made it 16,000. It's really up to them. And then they did the years. So in 2009, we had 16,000 building permits filed. Then in 2010, we had 15,500. So right there. Then in 2011, we had 13,900. So right below there. Then in 2012, we had 11,000, which is going to be right there. And then we had in 2013, 8,200 which is going to be close to there. And then in 2014, we had 5,900, which is going to be there. So we see that graph. And if we connected the dots, it would kind of go like that. So what we see here so far is that it has uh, decreased at a more rapid pace. So a sharper decrease occurred than, uh, than in any of the other years. The line graph shows the growth of a plant over several weeks. Describe the trend and then predict how tall the plant will be at seven weeks. So, so far we can see the plant is growing. Its height is increasing, which makes sense because it is a plant. And it's growing at a fairly linear rate. So let's say if it was at that seven week mark, I'd say that it'd be about there. Maybe 11 to 12 inches. So that would be my prediction of how tall the plant would be. Between 11 and 12 what does this graph tell you about the popularity of skateboarding? So the graph shows that skateboard sales have been increasing each year. As such, the popularity of the sport is increasing. What if our graph looked like this afterwards? If we saw our graph have a sudden dip? Oh, then we would know that it's declining. What if it had a dip and then went right back up? Then it increased then decreased, then increased at a sharper rate. So there's all sorts of ways that you interpret line graphs. So let's graph this one together, okay? So for this graph, you have the world's rainforests. We are on page 904. So I want you to take the time and I want you to graph this and then hit resume. So when we graph this, the year 1940, we have 2,875. So that's going to be about there. Let's say it's there, except that's not 1940. So let's say it's right there. Then the next year, 2,740. So now we're here, a little bit below. 2,600, now we're right in that middle bit. 2,375, we're right about here. 2,200, we're right about here. 1,800, we are right about here. 1,450, we are here. And then 825, we are here. So then if we connected our dots, we would see... And we're seeing a decline. So the size of rainforests... So let's look here. Describe the change in the world's remaining ra rainforests. It has declined. Describe the trend in the remaining rainforests. So again, size is decreasing. No matter what our remaining rainforests are, they are still decreasing in the millions of acres. How many millions of acres will there be left in 2020? 
let's think about that. If we keep going down, we have the year 2000 and we go up to here, which is 2020. I would draw my line and up, oh, I get there. I'm about 250. What does the graph tell you about the future? That we can expect the size to keep decreasing. This is a sad lesson. This is sad. So we can expect the size to keep decreasing. And that is literally how you analyze a line graph. That's it. So your homework is page 905, numbers 1 and 2. That's it. It's that easy. Okay.